So guys, I'm going to be sharing with you um, the hot scene I did for AOR for the time trial, for the sign up for season 3 of the AOR GT3 um, championship. And uh, yeah, you see straight away I start grinding the brakes just to make sure I get some temperature um, into the brakes before turn 1. Because on the first lap your tyres, your brakes are not heated up uh, as much as you'd want them to be. So I grind the brakes just to get a little bit more temperature so I can brake a little bit later for turn 1. because. I believe lap one is quite an important lap in the hot stint because it's where the car is not at its best so that's where you can sort of make or break your lap quite easily I would say probably the first lap and the last lap are the two most difficult laps first lap because nothing's really up to correct temperature and the last lap because one you know you're close to completing um, your hot stint and two the car tends to get a little bit sketchy because you've just been ragging it around for six laps so those are the two laps where I think it's easiest to lose time but um, I feel like if you get a good a good first lap in it really does set you up for um, quite a quick time obviously you see with some people you see quite a big fluctuation from their first lap time to to their second and that's just because the car or however they've got the car set up on the first lap just doesn't allow them to really push but um, I feel like I did a pretty good job with the setup. I will be sharing the setup at the, at the end. Um, and yeah, the car felt pretty good, pretty stable. And I managed to push the car um, probably more at wall. I tried it, I had a few attempts at, at the hot stint before. And before I like changed my setup, I was struggling through certain sections. Um, that section I would say I'm still struggling through. You see I went a little bit too wide into that corner and I just didn't manage to really carry the speed through the corner and that was something I struggled with um, throughout this hot step I think I actually invalidated two laps and I think they were both at that corner I believe um, even it never came, it never actually came up on the screen so I don't actually know when it invalidated my lap but I believe it was there twice and both times I just went too wide lost the run into the next corner which obviously affects your run down the back straight so I feel like I just lost time which was quite annoying but first lap managed a 54 free which I was pretty happy with and as I said before it sets you up for quite a nice run when you start off in the low 54s um, managed to hit turn one perfectly there and this corner is very deceiving but you can gain quite a lot of time just by taking the correct line um, again this is another corner where a good line sets you up properly for the first sector and the first sector there's a lot of time to be gained just by the um the corners the type of corners that they have in the first sector you can gain a lot of time just by taking the correct line into the corner but i, I do enjoy this section quite a lot um as a, as in general i do enjoy nurburgring quite a lot i actually prefer the 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 f1 chicane at the end opposed to the gt chicane because I just think that the GT chicane is so easy to throw your lap away in that corner. So easy. That's the only corner where really sort of I start to think about it as I'm coming up to it. Like, please, please just get through this lap. But um, managed to nail the Schumacher S. It's quite important not to take too much of the curb. Because the car tends to come down hard off the curb. Then bounces a little bit. And then you're going to find it really hard to get it turned in right. You can see we run right there. And this is what I was talking about. It messed up my line into this corner. So I ended up taking a shallow line, actually touched the gravel as well, didn't get a great run down the straight and I, I think I lost a good two and a half, three temps just through that sector alone, just taking a completely wrong line. Um, it was a pity because it was on quite a good lap. Um, again, I don't even think I was perfect for the last chicane, but um, really the section uh, just after the Schumacher S's, that's where I was, for some reason, I just couldn't get the turning right baffling but um come across the line i believe my second lap was a 54 one but i think that lap was actually an invalid because as you guys saw i went quite wide and even though i lost time it still counts obviously going too wide invalidates your lap and rare tear 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 so yeah um i think that was my first invalidation which i was proper annoyed because 54 one i definitely would have been in the 53s um, straight off the back really as you see we get so sideways here. I almost spun it but what I did is I kept it um, I kept it in second gear if I had shifted down to first I definitely would have been it so um, 
Yeah, it actually didn't work out as too bad of a first sector actually. We still managed to put in a pretty decent first sector on this lap. But um, yeah, it definitely wasn't planned. And again, coming down towards the, is it the Dunlop um, hairpin? I love this corner. I love this corner. Probably my favorite corner on the track. I just enjoy the, the way it's sort of cambered and the downhill nature of the corner. And it's just, it's just a nice feeling when you get the line right. Schumacher S is always a tricky corner, especially because we're doing it at night. It's quite difficult to spot your marks. Um, you you want to take as much as you can of that outside curb because you need to straighten the car out quite a lot. But again, going into this corner, run wide. And that's, that's pretty much where I was invalidating my laps. And it was just annoying because that's not the optimum line. That's definitely not the quickest way through that corner. And I think I only managed to get that corner right a couple of times. There's a couple of other times I think I just, for some reason, for whatever reason, I just couldn't get a car turned in. Um, and yeah, it just, it's costing me time all the time. But I managed to navigate the, uh, the chicane at the end again. And it's quite important to get on the power at the right time out of the last corner because you get on a bit too early, then you feel the back end start to squirm and then you've got to get out of the throttle a little bit and then obviously that's going to affect your run um, all the way down the straight. And I think the hot stint is probably the, the better way to, you know, assign people to tiers because you get to see a little bit of the consistency and I, I think it's not that hard to get a seriously fast lap. Um, you can set your car up to just about survive over one lap and then after that your car's completely impossible to drive. So um, I don't think it was impossible to, to get a seriously fast time in just doing one hot lap. I think the hot stint is a, probably a better representation to you know people's talents or people's consistency so yeah I think it's definitely the way to go um, obviously Nürburgring being a track that pretty much everybody knows so there shouldn't be any struggle for anyone to get put six laps together even I invalidated two of mine but never mind um, I actually went a little bit too deep into that corner that time and yeah as I said every lap I didn't get. I don't think I got one lap perfect. There was something wrong with every lap, but still the times weren't too bad. Um, yeah, pretty much. Just when, when you're doing these hot stints, I just I try not to think about. Um, I try not to think about the the next lap, or I just focus on the lap that I'm doing. Focus on the corners. Um, I just try to put out of my mind like oh my god I got two laps to go and on the last lap it does get quite difficult because you know you've been grinding and you've been flying the whole time and then you get to the last lap but the car feels a bit sketchy and it's very easy to just chuck everything away and I think on the I, I had a I had a hot stint attempt before this and I was absolutely flying on that one I had I did like majority 50 freeze the whole entire time and then I got to the last two laps and absolutely bombed I I think I lost like nine temps on the second to last lap and then 1.7 seconds on the lap after and then I was just like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't even. So I had to just do it again because, yeah, it was just, it was a nightmare. But I think on that run, I managed like a 50, 54.2 on the first lap and it was two 53.9s, 54.0 and then, oh, mate, I just completely just threw it all away, man. Very easy to do very easy to do and it was always the, the chicane at the end um, that's why I, I feel like in in this run I, I don't think I attacked it like how I really wanted to I was quite late on the turn in as well and I was off the throttle for longer than I should have been I think through that corner but it was just all about just trying to get through it man all about trying to get through it but yeah at the Dunlop hairpin again managed to take a better line than we did on the last lap um, last lap was a 53.9 as well, it was actually a decent lap, but um, again I think, is it this lap? I think I make another mistake, it's either this one or the next one, I think that was also invalidated. Um, is it this lap? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but I always feel like it affects your run through this corner when you go that far wide um, on the corner before. So you really got to swing the car back to the left and then set yourself up for the back straight and I, I felt like that was my weakest part um that and the chicane i feel like I, I feel like i can you know i remember back in the day 
doing um, Nürburgring, I used to be absolutely ringing it through that chicane. I mean, properly just Larry everything. And I feel like that's where I used to gain quite a lot of time. But for some reason now, I'm always just uh, a bit too tentative through there at the moment, but it is what it is, man. Um, coming through turn one again, quite easy to once you once you get turn one and um, braking zone dialed in quite easy to find your marks you can see we get extremely sideways again and yeah this is where the car starts to lose a bit of its grip and you just gotta place the car right make sure you know you sort of anticipate where the car's gonna have its moments and then you just try and sort of steer into it gently because if, if you're too rash on the steering wheel that's where especially when the tires start going a little bit that's where the car will just get seriously sketchy so um yeah managed to still navigate through there i could tell i lost a little bit of time through turn two because the car was just sliding instead of going forwards but um i i always sort of set places in my mind on a lap where i think i can make up a little bit of time um it's important not to sort of especially if you've lost like three or four temps you know you've done some good laps before that it's highly unlikely you're gonna make all that up at the rest of the on the rest of the lap so you kind of just got to you know accept the fact that you've lost that time and just try and get the rest of the lap as good as you can and try and you know, limit the damage but um, you managed to actually get a decent run onto the back straight this time and yeah I feel like that the first first sort of sector was a little bit off but um, the rest of the lap's been decent. Again there you see I turned in a little too late for the chicane. Had to be tentative on the throttle and then I overshot the last corner a little bit. Managed to pull it back in but I definitely feel like I lost a bit of time there as well. And I think this is the last lap of the run, is it? Yeah, that's the last lap of the run and yeah, managed majority low 54s. It definitely could have been better but um, yeah, we managed to do a job. And yeah, that was the run. So I'll show you guys the setup now. Um, really, <coughs> setup felt pretty good to be honest with you. Um, this is what I did with tire pressures. Obviously, it was quite cool. So um, the PSI's, the cold pressures are quite high, or a lot higher than normal. Um, but yeah, I don't. I didn't think I changed that much. I feel like I put the toe up quite high compared to where it was. I think it was like the minus 0 0.8 or something. And I put it up to minus 1.4. Um, I believe I put the rear toe up quite a bit as well. I didn't touch the cambers, I don't think. Um, electronics, I had the TC ABS on three. I actually put the ECU map down from eight to seven. I don't know why I did that. I don't even know if I meant to do that, but I just noticed that it was on seven the whole time. Um, TC2 was on free as well, um, so that's pretty self explanatory. 24 litres of fuel. Um, for some reason, I always move my tyre sets like seriously high. I just I just don't know why I do that, but I do it anyway. And um, I actually went with the front brake um, pads and rear brake pads on one. Obviously, it's not, you know, it's only six laps, so you can get away with running them on one. So that's what I did and um did i change a lot here i can't remember if i did change a lot here i think i moved the brake bias down from like 52.4 to 52.0 um i put the steering ratio up because i find that the porsche like it initially doesn't turn in and then you get a whole load of grip in the middle of the corner and it was like just it's a little bit too sharp for me so i actually put the steering ratio up but this is just personal preference um I believe I went up one or so on the uh, wheel rate at the front. I went up on the bump stop rate. Um, I think the bump stop range I didn't I didn't touch. I believe I went. I can't. I don't. I don't think I touched this. I don't think I touched the the rear. Um, I didn't. I don't think I touched the rear suspension or anything. Anti roll bar. I may have went up on the rear anti roll bar just to get the car to rotate in the slow bits. Um, the preload. Uh, I, I honestly I can't remember I don't know it was definitely similar to what it is now um, around 70 or something like that dampers I did touch um, you can see especially the rear I completely stiffened it up um, and this is I just wanted the car to feel better through the fast corners because originally I was sort of 
especially going through the Schumacher S's, I was just getting understeer, so I was having to get off the throttle way longer than I needed to. Um, I did put the, originally I had this really stiff as well, but I sort of reined it in a little bit because I just wasn't getting through that, um, that chicane at the end. I was hitting the bumps and just flying off to the left. So uh, I changed that, softened up a little bit, and afterwards it felt pretty nice. Um, aero, I went quite high with a rear ride height. Um, ran eight, free wing, and yeah, it was it was solid enough, man. The car wasn't um, it wasn't too slidey, especially if you if you got smooth um, inputs. If you don't really rag the wheel from like left to right when you go into corners, you'd probably get away with it. Um, but yeah, this is quite actually the rear ride height is probably a little higher than I would normally have it. But that's just because I know I've only got to do six laps. But I probably, if I was doing it for a race, I maybe would have went down just a little bit. Just to um, make sure after 20, 25 minutes, the car is still stable. Because well, obviously, once the tyres start wearing, this is where your aero balance is going to start kicking your ass if you've gone too aggressive. So, um, yeah, managed to, uh, managed to get a, a little lap in. Um, front brake ducts on three rears on two i mean it was pretty cool temperatures so um i didn't feel like i had the need to run my brake ducts really open but let's have a look at the timetable manager 11 minute 25.3 which i don't think is anything spectacular but it was good enough and there yeah, you can see the laps that i invalidated None of my none of my fastest sectors were done on the invalidated lap, so um, yeah. But you can see you can see the mistakes like on lap one that the first the middle sector was was poor. The last sector was pretty good, but the middle sector was pretty poor. And um, yeah, I don't feel like I didn't really nail any laps. You can see if you put all my fastest laps together, then uh, it's a pretty decent time. But um, yeah, I don't feel like I, I nailed any laps in particular, but um managed just a uh, solid pace. It was at least for the most part within three three temps or, or so. The last lap, um, yeah, I don't know what I did. It was a pretty good first sector actually. I thought the last lap where I, I got sideways that it would have been a lot slower than that, but it was weren't that much slower than my fastest first sector so i was wrong about that one but again the middle sector is definitely where i i um i lacked the consistency that's where i kept running wide at that corner before the back straight um or the penultimate corner before the back straight so yeah uh that was my hot stint hope you guys like the setup script to tng don't forget to hit that like button definitely subscribe anyway peace